we've got the button part of the class all figured out now and you'll be tested on that in the demo one and then the second part of the demo two will be about knowing the, the actual lessons and what the what the teacher might ask you, the staff member might ask you a little bit about yourself. Why do you want to be a teacher? What do you, th what kind of qualities do you think you could bring to, to being a teacher? They might ask you questions like, how would you adjust to having, because a lot of times you'll have, say, like 10 classes a day or three classes a day. And one might be level one, and then one might be level six, which is more like level one would be like kindergarten or grade one and then jumping to a third grade level. And you might even get a level 12, but that's down the road probably. Unless you're a teacher, they might put you there uh, right off the bat. So you have to kind of change your style. And they're gonna ask you that. Like for instance, for the, for the younger ones, I might wear rabbit ears, right? Just to get their attention. I might bring out my props, which this is my, my, my number one prop that I go to for the little kids. But for the older kids, they're not going to be wanting to look at a prop. They're not going to want to be looking at stickers either. So you have to keep that in mind that you, you're not going to be using stickers probably as much. Like if I bring up, a, if I go into the room like this, I go in and say hello. And I say, hi, everybody. Now, I wouldn't be acting like that if they were really older kids. I'd say, hi, my name is Nick. Nice to meet everybody. And then they'll you know, talk, or I'll still bring them up probably one by one, but I always ask permission for them, because a lot of times you'll see kids like this, or they'll might be like half and half, or they might be off to the camera, they, you might not even see them, they might be pointing at the ceiling, but don't worry about that too much, because the idea is as long as you know, as long as you know that they're there, then you can proceed uh, with the material. When they're not there, you want to always make sure to keep everybody involved. We have four students in this room right now as we see this. And we want to make sure that every one of them is greeted individually. And there are two reasons for that. You want to make sure that they feel welcome. And you also want to make sure that you can check their audio. Right? Do you remember how to do that? We go down to each box individually. And we see that this one is 59. They're all set to 59 in this default practice room. I'm just, you can see my mouse is just hovering over each box. It automatically closes and gives me more information here. But let's say that you couldn't hear somebody. What would you do? Well, first thing I would do is I would say, I would check this. Make sure if it's way down here, it might be off. <laughs> you want to do it right in the middle. Maybe you can't hear them. You just going to want to test it out a little bit. Bring that up a little bit more, a little bit more until there might be something that causes some feedback or some like a shh like noise. You don't want to hear that. It's a distraction. So you go just below that. Let's say you still can't hear them. Well, if, if you're getting this, their lips are moving, but you don't hear anything. That's when you want to go to this and remind the student that they you can't hear them by clicking on either no sound or if there's no video, no video and sound. Because it's very important. Those first five minutes you have, it's very important to get that right. Because a lot of times, and it happens a lot, kids either having connection issues or sound issues, or maybe it's too loud. Now, do you remember what I said before in the first part? In the event, they're really, really low, and say let's say this is almost maxed out, and you still can't hear them, but you can just slightly hear them. You can bring them up on stage, and you get like a 10% bump in volume if you do bring them up on stage. I do that every once in a while. I can't hear them, I'll bring them up on stage. Or if you just can't hear them at all, that's when you go down to the CCT button over here. You press that, you tell them you can't hear them. Now, when you're going between different ages, you just keep in mind that not always, you're hoping that they always know English, but some older kids um, have started late and their parents decided that they would bring them into, because they're like 12 or 13, they says, well, I'm going to bring them into a level 12, but that's not very wise, because if they can't understand English, the child will feel lost. And you never want to obviously make fun of the child, you never want to isolate them, you always want to help them along as best you can, but, and then when we, go, I'll show you a little bit later, when we do the feedback, you could talk about it then, you can tell Q kids that um, they should be in a lower grade. So let's continue on. We've got to the we've got to the pleasantries. We've talked with everybody here, 
What I always do, even though some kids, most kids know this to get that extra diamond, which is at the presents, I always make sure that all of them are starting at one, just so they know they have something before they get started. Let's jump into the first lesson, but most of them will have these transparent boxes. And as, you, as you'll notice, when I open up the, the box, when I press the number one, it will flood the area with, a, with an image. Problem is, is these get in the way. So what I do always is I just make them smaller and I drag them down to the bottom. Let's say that I didn't do that. Let's say that I just left them as they were. Watch what happens when I open this up. Now this isn't bad because it's a light background, but when it's a dark background, it really clouds it and really, it really is, to me at least, it's a distraction. So I like to bring them down and I just put them off to the side. You don't have to do that, but that's what my own personal preference. Now, we're looking at this game and kids love games, right? So we always want to be, remember, we always want to be animated. We always want to show passion, not just for the children, but for the parents. We want the, want the parents to think that, you know, this is going to be fun for their child. This, the cute kids environment is going to be fun where they want to come back again and again and again. So what would I do if I saw this? i say, who is that? Who is that right there? He's got, what is that on his face? He's got a mustache on his face. What's on his head? What's on his head? What's he wearing? What is that? And then there's, then if they're really young, you talk about color, right? It's a hat. It's a hat. It's a, you might, you could either ask them. I always try to ask them because you want to get them involved. You want to tell them everything. What color is that hat? And this is a great point to do that is you want to lean in a little bit. And the, and the trainer is going to love this, the fact that you're leaning in. What color is that hat? And they, they might say, hopefully they say red. You could do two things. You could say, a red, a red, point to your mouth, a red hat. A red hat, right? You want to, you want to focus on that color, focus on that prop. If you have a hat, which I do here down here somewhere, I would bring out the hat and I would show them hat, hat, hat. And I would put it on my head. I'm wearing a black hat, you know. And then you could also, another thing you could throw in here is say, can you show me something red? And you bring up something that you have. Can you show me something that's red? Red? And that's a great way to get them involved where they're going running through their house looking for something that's red. It's there's two things that I love about this. One is it's it's, it's a time killer. <laughs> but it also engages the student and it makes them even more involved with the class. So then you can talk about what? Did he hit his head on those bricks? Did he head, hit his head? And then you say, What is this? And this is when you take your, your cursor and you're gonna draw a picture around this. You can draw a picture around that. What is that? Is that, what is that? And they might not know what it is. You say, can you say mushroom? 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 Or also you could say mushroom. Mushroom. The idea is to get those two syllables out, right? <clears throat> and you say, what happened to Kobe when the, he, when the mushroom hit him? He got big you want to use your use full tpr tpr again is total physical response and you want them to, to 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 repeat the same thing with you because can you do that can you show me big so the idea is just to work with that you don't want to talk too much about the game just say that this is you can say it in the beginning but you don't want to go too much into detail about they might not even know that this is based on mario brothers you don't have to worry about that at all don't even mention it and uh, just to them, it's a game, and um, and that's it. You can also talk if you want. You don't have to talk about the clothing. You know, we have the red hat. We have the red shirt. We can talk about that. And that's it. And then we move on to the next thing. So we, at, if you look at the right here, you have the reference material over here. You can quickly glance at that if you want. I wouldn't spend too much time, especially that staring at it, because the, the parent's going to, 
catch you and if and if you're in your early classes the staff more than likely was probably be watching you as well so you want to just keep in mind you know who's this what's the weather like that's another thing we can talk about what's the weather like you know there's no sun but is that a blue sky or what color is the sky what are these what are these you know and then that's pretty much it and then you move on to the next lesson so in your mind you're thinking this is what i do I'm thinking, okay, I've got 10 circles here. I know that at eight, usually it's nine, but at eight, the exit quiz. And remember, you wanna teach for at least 28 minutes. You don't wanna move into that last stage at 25 minutes or 26 minutes, but you'll get in trouble for that. So you can in your mind, you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna do like three minutes per class. Maybe this one, usually I will tell you that nine is the exit, uh, the exit. In this case, it's eight. So I'm going to think about three to four minutes per circle. So the first, remember the first one is five minutes, but that doesn't count towards your actual class. That's an introduction uh, moment only, or introduction period. Then once the class starts at zero, zero, you jump into the first lesson. Now, we're going to go to the next lesson, and we see three buttons here, OK? And, the, and remember, we're always, we're always in the command of the, of the class. We're always taking charge of the class. So already as I hover over the word run, I know that I'll be talking about two things, run and running. And this is always difficult. I will, I will tell you, it's always difficult to, to compare the two because they're so similar, right? So we click on run, and we have run, right? Run. And you're going to show them run. And then you say, he is running. He is running or he is running. You don't even have to move, but it's better to be fully engaged. All right. You want to, and you want to say, can you run? Can you show me how to run? You run and they'll be like this. They'll be, it's, so, it's so funny because you'll see them like this. They'll actually physically get up and start running. And then you can say the dog or, or say, what is this? What is this? Oh, oh. It's a dog, and the dog is running. The dog is running, right? So that's the idea of this. And then you go through each of the buttons. You have jump, and don't do a little one. What I would do is really, you know, jump, jump, and then really get them to get involved because it really, for two things for me, it wakes them up for one thing, and also you're engaging them into the the actual learning. You're actually giving them an option to engage with you. And it really helps a lot in the communication between you and the child. If he's just sitting like this, jump, jump, jump. You know, there's no engagement. There's no, there's no involvement. There's no excitement. There's no interest, really. So this is the actual verb, jump. And then we say, the cat is jumping. Now here, there you go. The cat is jumping. Now, if you notice it, this is new, which I love. Um, they have this plus, like a um, magnifying glass. The plus, you just click on that, and it's a little bit bigger for them to see. Now, the only thing that you can't do, let me see if I could do this. Yeah, some of my functionality here, like I can't do a text board here when it's in this magnifying state. I just click off of that. And you can see how that I threw these on there, but I couldn't use them. And then we go into fly. That's the next one, right? Fly. The bird is flying. The bird is flying. And then you just, you know, flap your wings, you know, something like this. Fly, fly. Or bring on a butterfly. You can go up to your, this is a great time to use stickers. Stickers isn't always just for the beginning of the, of the class. A lot of people forget that they're always available. They're always there. So this is when you bring out um, bring out the butterfly. The butterfly is flying. Remember, we use the garbage can for all clear. Close the X. We're on to the next task. Task is probably easier to, to think about because the whole thing is a class or a lesson. If you just use the word task in your mind, you're thinking, okay, this is the next task. All right, so now we have, remember, there's always going to be a button here, one, two, three, uh, new round. Sometimes you have to press a start button. 
Um, and so you have to control it. So here we see three pictures, right? And they're, they're all animated, which is cool. And what I always do is, this is the hide game. What I always do is I click on each one and I have them repeat or I'll just wait for them to say it. Jumping. Whenever you're talking, okay, you, you want to go like this when you want to hear them, but when you want them to follow your mouth, jumping, jumping. Say it slowly. Jumping, jumping. These are just great ways to model, get them to say, uh, to follow your mouth, how the sounds look like to them. I go through all three of them, and then I'll hide one. And that you just press one. It's a simple, and I go like this. It mix up the cards, mix up the cards. You might want to say mix, 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 mix. The younger grades, definitely. The older <laughs> older kids, you won't do that with it. All right, and then, of course, then they guess it. You say, yay, high five, high five. And then you give diamonds to them as a group, right? We go up here, and we give them diamonds. Now, this is like an all play. I would never do one by one. But if you, if you feel like one kid's not paying attention, I might isolate them. I might say, Momo. Can you tell me which one is missing? You know, just isolate them to get them involved. That's the only time I would go individual on this game. Now, what I do is, I don't know about other teachers, but what I do is I play this four times. I play it twice where I push out each one. And if they're breezing through them, like really quickly, and I've only gone for like 20 seconds worth of, the, of, this, of this task, I go, you know what? This is too easy. Let's try it for, I'm going to show it to you for three seconds. And this time, I'm not going to say anything. And you don't say anything. Shh, don't say anything. And then that's fun because I'll just show it for three seconds, right? Let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, hide. Right? And then they're like, some of them will get it just like that, and others will be like, some will say it wrong. I never penalize them for that. I always give them all diamonds, no matter if they're right or wrong here, and then we get it. And then the last one is just one, they're, again, they're still breezing through it. I say, you know, it's still too easy. Let's just show it for one second. Do you think you can do it for one second? And they're always like, no, I can't do it, no. And I'll say, yes, you can. You can do it. Come on, show me. Right? You want to encourage them. And then you just show it for one second. All right? Let's move on to another game. So, again, one and two. We always go in order. One first. Here is... And you put your head, your uh, hand to your ear. I'm running. Can you say that? Can you say, I'm running? Right? You want to get them involved as much as... Right? And you're like this. I'm running. And then as soon as you hit repeat, now this isn't always going to say repeat. It might say something else. Um, he actually goes, ah, ah. right? You want to be very <laughs> physical and, you know, get humor involved and everything like that. And that's, that's that. And then, so this might be a faster task. And then you go into, the, I'm jumping. Same thing. Ow, ow, ow. And then you'll say, like, what's this up here? What's coming out of the box? What is that? Maybe you'll show them, have some props. Is that money? Are you getting money? Like that. So you show them the money and they think, wow, that's beautiful. Right? And the same thing here. Now we hit the repeat and then, right? So it's, it's very physical. You're going to get a good workout. Remember, don't drink on the camera. Don't eat on the camera. Don't pick your nose on the camera. What I do sometimes is I'll go like this. Mm, let's see. And I'll drink that way. <laughs> or I'll always have it off to the side. I'll just do it real quick. And then that's it. I never do that on camera. You don't want to do that. For some reason, they do it all the time, but you don't need to do that. 
So we've gone through this, and this might just take one minute. One minute, you know, don't go overboard. You can go back to the thing again and say, what color is the sky if you want to? Or, you know, what are these called? What are those called? Are they turtles? Turtles, right? But you don't want to go too much into that because that's really not what it's about. And if we go back to the jumping again, Right, you want to do again jump up in the air if you can. If you go to this next one, this one's just a simple uh, we're going to select students, and this is where you do that. You select that as you see when I open that uh, button up, you see at the bottom here, you see select, 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 and then you just pick one, and then they will actually mm, they will appear here in the middle. You'll see their faces. Now this is acted out. This is hard for them sometimes to understand. And so it's better to show, you know, lead by example and you show first. So let's let's hit start. Jumping. Can you jump? And then you go jumping, jumping. Right? And then you want them to do the same thing. Again, especially when they're young, you want to get them involved. Now if you hit, if you press this word this button down here, this is the award. And if you look next to each of these uh, little boxes, these little hex, they're hexagons. Um, uh, there's a little reward. Whatever is on that will give you one or two diamonds. You just hit that and it will automatically give them a diamond. I usually give them two diamonds per correct answer. It's really up to you. You can give them three diamonds if you want. But there is a limit to how many diamonds you can give per child. This is fairly new, within the last six months or so. You can only give each child 100 diamonds. Some people in the past were giving 300, 400 diamonds a piece. And it's just, it's just you don't need to do that. So I, I guess pretty much what I do is anywhere from 50 to 70. It's very rare I go to 100 anymore. 50 to 70. Some kids will demand it. And if they're being a pain about it, you know, I don't really do it. But if they're really cool kids, I'll do it. It doesn't really matter. The diamonds are very important to the kids. And you'll see at the end, they'll say, would you like a sticker? I want diamonds. You know, and we'll, I'll show you that a little bit later. So this is that. You just go to the next. After that's completed, that's been one completed. I try to go through each one now. If, you, if I see select here, you, you select the student. You'll see just below the word select over here under Kobe. Or above Kobe's head is a number one and this is also fairly new it's about a year old which is great because it keeps track of who you went to sometimes you forget and what I try to do although I don't always do this I'll say who wants to go first and if I see a hand I'll start with another person I won't go I won't start with Kobe so if you start let's say I go back to this and start again and I say I'm gonna have girl go first Right? And I'm not starting with Kobe. I decide to go with girl. She goes. She gets the reward. Now when I go back to select student, you see there's a one under under the word select. I know that there's one. That's where I have to go back to. I might go through this three or four times depending on time. Again, remember, in my mind, I'm thinking three minutes per circle. This one might be a little bit more since the exit is on number eight, not number nine. But you can just really do that um, pretty easily by multiplying by three. So don't worry about the, the, the clock up here right now. It says 30 minutes. This is just a clock that keeps on going around and around and around. Um, so once we do this for every student, you'll see that they're all... Right? Give them the, the award. Go to the next student. Right? Hit start again to get it right. You go to walking. Let's say you look at it and you go to the next thing and whoa, hold on a second. And they'll be mad. They'll be so mad at you if you forget them. Um, there are actually three types of lessons in the Q Kids platform. And this is this this the way it looks right here is anywhere from one to four kids that you'll teach. And um, this is the cheapest class. And then there's the one on one which um, I might have. I'll, I'll I'll post some pictures. That's they're a little bit bigger boxes. There's just one picture of you, 
one picture of them, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. They pay a little bit more because it's one-on-one. -on -one. That's they're the only student in the class. And then there's a fixed student, which is the most expensive, I believe, and that is someone who who pays um, to get the same teacher continuously. So I I have one fixed right now. I used to have two. I have one, and um, and I I see him three days a week. And what's great about that is you see their natural progression, and that you're hoping that they're progressing with you. Um, and uh, then you get to know them. And it's really, it's really quite, um, um, yeah, you get to the point where you're, you pretty much know a lot about their lives towards the end of their, of their, um, their studying with you. Let's try another one here. This is uh, very popular. We do this a lot. First, I see there's three buttons. We're going to go to new round first. And this is a very short sentence. Sometimes they're 12, 13 words on one line. This is really simple. We say, I am running. I am running. Right? And um, so what the children do is they're picking uh, on their screen. They just they don't see them highlighted. They're just going to choose which words they think is I am running. And at the bottom here, when they're Let's say, um, well, they're not answering, obviously, because there's nobody there. But what will happen is at the very bottom, now here there's only three sentences, three, three choices, either three words or three sections. And so at the very bottom, you'll see um, three or four boxes. If they're green, that means that they got them right. If the, one of them is red, that means the word is wrong. So here it's up to you how you want to score them. I typically, if they're super competitive, I'll award an extra diamond for each one that's right. And then at the end of this task, you'll see we'll review the, the sentences and say them out loud. So here we'll go through each one. I am running. Then we go to the next the next button. As, as you see, I, as I hover over the next button, it says one verse, one out of three. So we've completed one now. We want to go to the next one. He is jumping. Do, 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 do. And then it will pop up. As soon as they're finished, it will pop up at the bottom. Um, there's one other thing I'm going to show you after this. We're done with this. And then let's say we're finished. And this will kind of be grayed out a little bit. That means we're done. If you accidentally hit this, it's okay. This happens to all of us. Don't worry about it. Um, and then here is a review. So you want to review all the sentences that you've just uh, let them read them out loud. I am running. He is jumping. She is walking. And then you want to go back. I want to show you one thing I didn't show you in this last part. Um, down here, you'll see this little hand like this. These are called hints. So let's say a child is struggling and just cannot say it for the life of them. And instead of embarrassing them, Maybe they're feeling withdrawn. You gotta give them a little hint. This will send the answer to them or give them an idea of where it is or what, what to say. And then they feel like they're part of the group again because you don't want to isolate the kids if they're not, if you're not able to keep up. You want to work with them the best you can, but you don't want to make them feel like they're not a part of it and they're not getting something right consistently. If, they're, if you see that that's happening consistently when they're just not answering you give them a little hint, give them a little prod here. It'll give them a little more information. So we did that. We're going to skip to the next one here. What's Kobe doing? What's he doing? Now you want to get very animated, very involved. And then you see these five buttons at the bottom. Each one will be running. And you can do this in place. You know, If you're standing for your lesson, some people stand. You can run in place jumping i would physically jump up walking you know you can just go you can just do it while you're sitting too you can you can say running jumping walking walking is a little slower right now he's flying 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 you want to try to make it as much and then swimming of course you can go like this oh <gasps> 
right? Do as much as you can. He's holding his breath, so it's making it easier for us to follow along. And Kobe, like I said before, Kobe and Momo in the lower levels, L6 to lower, is in, they're probably in 85% of the lessons, except for the the, um, the phonics. I'm not sure. I don't do phonics, so I'm not sure who does uh, what what uh, animals they have in phonics. Um, we're going to go to the next one, which is a quiz. This is the final quiz. Usually it's always a number nine. So on, the, on the lower levels, you might have up to 13. And then in the holiday levels, we have 18 or 20 because they include songs. And they'll include activities, which is really a lot of fun. They do it. QKids does a great job of animation. Their quality of their artwork is getting better. Sometimes I wish they, the pictures were bigger because a lot of times, even you, it's really hard for you to see what it is that we're looking at. The great thing also about QKids is that, and when we're all done here, I'll show you, there's some there's some tutorials, some places where you can actually look at each lesson. They don't fully show you all of the lessons, but there are some teachers here, some of your peers that you'll see that actually have recorded a lot of the 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 uh, lessons and you can actually talk to them about getting copies of that so you can see what they're like. So this one is you're just yelling out, um, this is the only part that I wish they would give is the words because sometimes you forget what they are. Not, this one's obvious, but sometimes you're like, oh man, what was this one again? You're like, oh, I can't remember. So this one's running. You just click on it and you wait for them all to answer. Uh, jumping, walking, flying, and then you click on quiz focus sentences. This is really, this part, if they get some wrong, I don't really, I don't award any diamonds here. But the sentences, they should know everything that they learned up to this point will be in the sentences. You click on that and you'll see on the left hand side in vertical order, one, two, three, four, all of the names. You'll see their picture. Right now there's nobody selected. So I just hit Kobe and that person's face will appear here in the middle and you'll say you and some, sometimes they'll just answer the question they'll, they'll say they're jumping but I want them to say the uh, say the question as well I'll say what what and then you, you it's kind of like a prompt to, to get them to say the sent uh, the uh, question and then they do it. And then here is a chance for you to type it if you want. So when I do that, so you go through each one of the kids. It's a great way for them to kind of give you an idea of if they've understood the material. And what Q Kids does is you can tell right in the beginning we had this one introduction animation, right? Well, they always repeat it again at the very end and in the older levels they'll actually have a summary and they'll at, they'll actually ask questions this one they just showed again even this is wrong i gotta have a way off now let's talk about this really quickly because you will be teaching once you're teaching like right now we're not teaching 17 but last month and in February, we were teaching sometimes 17 classes a day. And I'm going to have a whole other video about that, how to keep yourself healthy while teaching. But uh, when it comes to drinking, I found that warm water or hot water, like a tea, is better. It's better for your throat than ice water. Although ice water is good in those hot days. Um, uh, or lozenges. I think lozenges are great because it keeps the, uh, the th your throat moist. So when it gets dry like this, I can actually feel it's dry, and I feel like I'm going to cough. I don't want to cough while I'm on, on, on here. Your microphone's right here. Don't sneeze. Try not to sneeze. If you if you have to sneeze, this is a, a kind of a cool trick. You put your finger underneath your nose. I guarantee you, 85% of the time, you will not sneeze. If you do have to sneeze, I go like this. Out of the way, I go, <coughs> excuse me. And don't forget to bring it down. I say, teacher, I can't hear you. I Sometimes when I'm between classes, I'll be eating or drinking my dinner or whatever, and I forget to bring this down. You heard a, you heard a difference, right? It almost sounds like an uh, like I'm away from the microphone. So that's it, and then we go to the final part. I'm going to click on ten, and this right now is active. This evaluation. If you go into this room too early, 
which I, in the when there's four students, it's um, this comes down at 29 minutes and 30 seconds. You can get here at 28 minutes. All right, you can uh, don't ever. I hope this doesn't stop again. Every time I type, it, it seems to. Right, 28 minutes. Don't come in here before 28 minutes. Ooh, can't see it. All right, 28 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, so this is the leaderboard. You see there's only two of these transparent boxes, which is kind of hard because there's, if there's four kids, you have to figure out a way to get them all four on stage. Some kids will want to come up. Some kids won't want to come up. This is your time to give them a little bit of uh, rewards if, you, if it's close. One child might have more diamonds than another child. You, you see how they're spaced? I think the most I've ever given, and that's what they recommend, no more than three. Don't have one children with 15 diamonds or 50 diamonds, and the other one has 25. Unless they come in late, you have no control over that. Some kids will cry. They'll say, why did I only get 25 diamonds? He's got 50. Well, you came in 25 minutes late. <laughs> and I hope that someday they'll actually fix that because... Um, sometimes you'll get a red mark and it's like you, you have to make sure and follow along with your classes and make sure why did you get a red mark by this child he comes in 25 minutes late and he's getting all the wrong answers and it gives you he shouldn't he shouldn't be allowed to give you any red marks after we've you know given some diamonds and these are two things you can do one you can give you can bring him up on stage before 29 minutes and 30 seconds or you can do it afterwards. I tend to do it afterwards because the reason why is after I leave the evaluation part, everything gets taken out off the screen or they get taken off their screen and then you have to do the work over again. Um, but so let's say they've all gone up on stage, you've given them diamonds and everything or, or uh, stickers and you go to the evaluation. <clears throat> now with this, with this, type of lesson they can still hear you and they can still see you so don't be like this like going oh man that kid was such a pain in the butt um oh, don't don't say anything like that don't ever say anything like that they can hear you and the parents can hear you Just make sure your, your mouth is shut and don't say anything here the one-on-ones once you hit that thing it it erase it uh mutes it mutes you and your picture's gone as well so here you see they they were all absent um, because there's nobody here. We can't really show you anything here, but there is a point here where you would say, um, you know, one, two, or three. They got A, B, or C. I try to give them all A's unless they're really struggling. I give them a B. They don't want to be there. The older kids. I just you know I don't give them a C, but I just tell them what down here. Um, there's some other choices. Hopefully I'll show you uh, in another class the final part. Okay, and that's it. And then you just submit that, and that goes to Q Kids, and then you're done. And then you, you'll come back, and I can't show you now because I can't submit it here, but you'll come back to the screen and you can give them some more rewards. Technically, technically you have until 35 minutes, but you don't really want to do that because your next class starts at 35 minutes. So you want to kind of keep the evaluation part of it down to like two or three minutes, unless you're having a fantastic class and you want to keep going, but I wouldn't really try to do that when you're first starting out. And then you just hit this button right here and confirm I'm leaving the classroom. So now let's pretend I go into one of my classes I did today. Um, so here, what I'm talking about here, I'm all over the board. I'm at level six, which is like third grade. I did a level 12, which goes into deep detail. I mean, really deep detail. Um, but you won't be doing that. When you're first starting out, you're probably going to do an L1, L2, or L3. But you can see I'm all over the place. I have different levels. And some of the some of the classes are really, really interesting. Like this one I actually learned more about. <laughs> like the first five minutes is really difficult. When I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what to talk to them about. I was like, you know, I don't know what to say. Typically what I do is I try to, like if they're really young, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about colors I'll say, what color is this? What color is this? Can you find me something that's red? You know, and that will eat up a lot of time. A lot of these kids have taken tons of classes with us, and they've heard the same questions over and over and over and over again. 
They might get bored with it. So try to think of something new. What did you do today? What did you do yesterday? Nine times out of 10, they're going to say, I did my homework. Or what do you want to do today? I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to read a book. So they're, they're pretty much conditioned to... Um, well, I hope you enjoyed everything that I've been teaching you today. Uh, one of the key things I didn't talk about when you are in your interview process, uh, make sure you're well rested. Make sure you have water nearby. Take a good um, a good sip of that before you start talking to them. Also, make sure that you're, you're dressed appropriately. I just have a nice polo shirt here for the women. Don't wear any tank top. Don't wear anything that's low cut. Just wear nice something nice as if you were on a job interview. The men can wear uh, either a polo shirt or a, um, a button-up shirt. Always have your hair nice and brushed if you're uh, women. Uh, guys can get along, get away with this because our hair is short. Uh, just make sure your, your teeth are clean. Everything's good about your facial expression. Always smile. Smile as, smile as much as you can. Even when you're looking for something, smile. Always show that you're happy to be there. It's it's just really a lot of it is just passion. Make sure that your passion exudes, your personality shows through, you're happy, you're engaged, you're uh, inviting, you're using lots of gestures, point at your mouth when you're talking, especially to the little children. They want to see your words, your lips, the way they move. Put your hand up like this. Also, go like this. Come closer to the camera and go like that. Hello. You know, you always do that for the smaller children. The older children, you probably won't be teaching them right away, but when you do t teach them, it's a little easier because it's a little more relaxing. Also, something that I didn't talk about, which you'll notice a lot, especially with the younger kids, is uh, there'll be a parent. And a lot of times it's the cutest thing. The kid will be like this. And he ran. And don't worry about that. I mean, some, some teachers get upset by that. This, it, you know, for the younger kids, the parents want them to do well. And they're very involved. You also might get a parent that's taking your picture. You know, don't worry about that. That happens all the time. They might not be taking your picture to see who you are. They might be taking a picture of the screen. They want to take a picture of something. They don't know how to do a, a screenshot or whatever. So anyways, there's all these different things. And, and a lot of times you're going to be doing things um, on the fly. You're going to be impro improvising. The teacher, the whoever's uh, with you, may act like a small five-year-old child. And they might throw some wrenches into the situation. They might say something that you're not expecting. So don't just say, how are you? And they might say something totally different. Don't say, oh, that's good. Always listen to what they're going to be doing, you know. Always pay attention to that and make sure that what they're going to say is you're ready for it. Uh, and practice with your friends. Practice with your husband or wife or your children. And, and you know, some kids might not even be present. They might be off somewhere else or, you know. Uh, you really, it's everything, every day is almost different, which is fun because you get to, you get to try different things and some things you'll use over and over and over again because they work. And so I think that's what makes it fun is it, it, it is different, it's fresh, and some things you might have to try differently um, depending on the situation. So I, I hope this next one helps you a lot. The one, the next, after you pass demo two, you're doing really well. And that's when they're going to actually do some trials with you. And um, and that really goes into, um, they might even have you do a couple of these where you're actually doing a class with fake students again. Um, when you're actually doing a teaching with a, with a student, a live student, you will get paid for that. That's a training. Uh, they I, I heard that it can go as many as six times. Mine was three times. And I was so nervous. I kept on stopping her and and asking and clarifying questions with her. I don't even know if I taught a, cl a full class with the, with the teacher. The teachers are really nice. The trainers are really nice. They really want you to succeed. They really want to hire you. And all it is is really just making sure that you're a right fit. Kind of just like any other job. They want to make sure you're a right fit. And that you really want to do this. Because it is a lot of work. But once you get over that first hurdle, those first few hurdles... It's really easy, and you're kind of pinching yourself to see how much you know how much money you're making, 
for what you do. And it's just getting used to the hours. Sometimes if you're in the West Coast, you have to get you know used to those early hours. But other than that, it's just, it's a breeze, really. And I'm, I hope to have some more videos on how to take care of yourself because there's a lot of times you're sitting here for long periods of time. You want to try at least stretch between classes or get up and walk around and move your feet. Um, I have to position, I have a nice comfortable chair. It's a computer chair. And I, I still have to, kind of maneuver and change places and, and do that. And uh, your feet might get swollen. You have to be careful of that. But it's 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 all good. And it's a great job. And we're and they're, su they're super supportive. And there's lots of peers in, in, in the different Facebook groups as well as that can help you with different issues. And where I would strongly suggest you get into the mentorship program. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing that because it's a lot of work for me. But um, it's... Uh, Obviously, if I know you, I will help you. So you can always turn to me, but you will have a trainer and you will have a coach, which is really nice. Unlike some other companies that I've been with that don't give you anything and they just kind of throw you into the situation and then you have to try to figure out everything out for yourself. And so they really coddle you. They want to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. Then don't feel bad if they come into a class and give you suggestions. Um, might be you're talking too slow, you're talking too fast. Show some more enthusiasm, smile more. These are all things that just keep us, um, and, and even us veterans. I mean, we have to be kind of reminded sometimes because you do so many classes. You know, the mo I think the most I've ever done is 93 classes a week, which is insane. Or was it 100? 105. I think it was 105 classes I did, which is just insane. And don't, don't run yourself ragged because you need to be healthy, especially at these times, right? We need to be healthy have our immune system strong. So keep that in mind. Always sleep as much as you can. Take naps if you have to. You want to make sure that you're you're uh, you're healthy. Obviously, you see I'm tired. I've only got three hours of sleep last night, and I'm going I'm going back to bed as soon as I get done with this. So um, naps are very important. Keep uh, and women can wear makeup too if you want to hide. If you have like I've naturally have sleepy eyes, which is a bummer. But my eyes always look like I'm tired. I've had this problem since I was in uh, high school. But, you know, wear makeup. Men, some men wear makeup, too. So be careful what you put in your hands. Make sure that you don't have anything, any food, any drinks. Make sure you're not drinking. And I can drink now. I've been talking a lot. Warm water is best. Uh, the ice water, ice water is good for the summer months, but warm water is best. Hot water, if you ha can have it, have a cup of coffee before you you start. Make sure that you're awake before you start. Just don't roll out of bed in your pajamas and then come out here and start teaching. Um, if you do this, parents are going to hate that because it shows that you're tired. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do this. Don't ever yawn. Don't ever do anything like that. Uh, make sure that you're always alert and happy and you'll get good marks. And that's about it. Um, I think well, I have a list of stuff to to. I'll probably post in the room. Uh, if you're in one of my Facebook groups, I will post that list in the room of other things to watch out for. But make sure you have your headset by the interview, and your microphone is here. Make sure also to check your settings. You remember we talked about that in the very first opening of demo one. Make sure your your um, you're running off of your Ethernet, so you have a nice, good connection. You don't want any lag. Okay, that's going to hurt you. That's it. Right, right now, you won't need to know their names. But eventually, you will need to know their names. And same with these. This is Momo. This is Momo. This is Kobe, Frank the Fox, Dory Duck, Bill the Rabbit. This is uh, Cozy. This is um, each of the... Momo and Kobe both have a brother and a sister. So you have the extended families. Then they also have parents. And you'll need to know that down the road, but not right now. Sherry Sheep. And then, um, so Momo, Kobe, and probably the first four here are probably all you're going to need to know in the first few lessons that you do. And that's it. I hope you got something out of this. Remember, the, when they first talk to you they're going to ask you a bunch of questions i'll try to include those questions that they'll most likely ask you in a separate file 
and then you can look at those and kind of get ready for those. But they're going to just really want to get to know you, make sure that you're going to be a good teacher. If you do this lean-in technique, put your hand to the your hand to your ear. Remember to talk. Put point to your mouth when you're talking. This is your basic movement right here. This, this, and talk slowly, especially for the smaller children. You know, they're, remember, they're most of them are just learning uh, English for the first time. Slow, small words, and you'll be fine. Good luck. If you have any questions, don't forget to reach out to me.